got a lot of tops. So um, this is quite an interesting top, um, uh, which just has a little magnet on the bottom so that it'll um, uh, spin this thing around. I think uh, lots of mathematicians have lots of tops. You can, you can also run it on this um, The, there's the tippy top though. There we go. So it has a flat side on one side and it's just unstable on that side so that it, uh, so the axis rotates around until eventually it kicks and will um, spin upside down. And then I also have this little gyroscope which is quite fun. So it's wound up just like a yo-yo essentially. And then it will be nicely stable and process as it rotates. And you can get it at quite a good angle and it will be stable because of the um, rotation of the disc. So that's, uh, that's quite a fun little top. If you want something to run smoothly, you make it run on ball bearings like these. These are little ball bearings and large ball bearings, little spheres. You put them on the table and then you put something like a book on the top and you can roll it round perfectly smoothly like that. So you might wonder whether this sphere is the only such body. And this was a question that occurred actually to the famous mathematician Hilbert many years ago. He asked whether the property of having a constant diameter characterized a sphere. And the answer is, strangely enough, no it doesn't. This is an example of what's called a Meissner body. It's, as you can see, it's not at all spherical. It's made by taking a Rolo triangle, an equilateral triangle with circular sides rather than straight ones, and rotating it about an, ac an axis. But this had the property that however you put it on the table, at whatever attitude, the distance between the table and a parallel plane that just touches it above is exactly the same. So you can use these as ball bearings too. And they are just as good as the spheres. You put them on and roll your book around perfectly smoothly and you wouldn't know that those aren't spheres. I'm interested in how thin objects deform. So you take a piece of paper which is naturally flat. It's very easy to bend it, but it's very difficult to stretch. And there's a really nice piece of mathematics that says that for something that cannot stretch, you cannot change its curvature. So while you can curve a flat piece of paper into a cylinder, if you try to turn it into a sphere by squashing it onto something spherical, you end up making lots of um, creases and folds. That's interesting for objects that are doubly curved as well, because even though a sphere is curved in two directions, if I take a section of a ball, I can turn it inside out and it will stay happily in that inverted configuration. And that's the basis for a toy called Poppets, which basically has lots of spherical caps that you can kind of push through from one side and will stay popped until you push them through on the other side. Now the story I've told you so far is just about things that are very, very thin. And it turns out that if I increase the thickness of my sphere, then when I turn it inside out, what happens instead is that it's not happy being turned inside out. So after a short interval, it jumps up like that. And that's the basis of toys such as the hopper popper, which again is just a section of a sphere that you turn inside out and then let jump off the, sphere, off the table. Or this dropper popper, where if I drop it from sufficiently high, you'll see that it jumps up off the table. Thank you.